Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you had a great weekend. Wasn't it great to be able to celebrate uh, Easter together? And what a great time around God's Word on Friday and on Sunday. I hope you were encouraged and hope you found that useful, um, remembering what Jesus has done for us and being able to celebrate his, his bodily, victorious and glorious resurrection. So as things still continue as they are, we're going to carry on with our thoughts for the day and we're going to start a new series for the next few days on the attributes of God. And we're going to start today uh, with our first one in that series, uh, God is God. So there's a couple of readings, um, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 16 to 18. So we'll just read that. Sorry, verse 14. Behold, to the Lord your God belong heaven and the heaven of heavens, the earth with all that is in it. Yet the Lord set his heart in love on your fathers and chose their offspring after them, you above all peoples as you are this day. Therefore, circumcise the foreskin of your heart and be no longer stubborn, for the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords the great, the mighty, and the awesome God, who is not partial and takes no bribe. He executes justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the sojourner, giving him food and clothing. And then Isaiah chapter 40. It'd be great if you could read the whole chapter. It's incredible. But here's just a few verses at the end. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Whatever we think about God, whatever our imagined runs to, must be limited, mustn't it? Because God is infinite and we are finite, finite. We are limited. God is unfathomable, but God is the creator of everything. He can't be tamed or studied or analysed or worked out. He's beyond reach. He's beyond our understanding. And yet the amazing truth is that we can know him. He's graciously entered our world. On many occasions we read in the Bible, he spoke to people. He spoke to Adam and Eve, Noah, Abraham, Moses, many, many others, and ultimately spoke most powerfully and most wonderfully in the Lord Jesus Christ, as we just celebrated this weekend. And we can know God because he chooses to be known. Not only can we know about God, though, we can actually know him. We can be in personal, real, intimate relationship with him. And that's all because of what Jesus has done for us. We can worship him and know him not as an admirer or not as someone who's awestruck, but as dearly beloved children. I hope it encourages you that as awesome in the right sense of the word, God is how beyond our understanding, beyond our comprehension, beyond our working out he is. He has graciously and mercifully allowed himself to be known by us. And he's revealed himself to us in the Lord Jesus as an expression of his love. So please be encouraged today, if you're a follower of Jesus, that you can come to God as a dearly loved child. You can come to God of gods, the only true and living God. And you can come to him and you can call him Father. So let that encourage you today. And as we go over these next few days and we think about the attributes of God, we'll be reminded many times, I'm sure, of how incredible God is. But more so, how incredible it is that we can know him and have a relationship with him and have forgiveness for our past, peace for our present and hope for our future. So let's take that in today and let's dwell on that and meditate on that if we can today. Have a great day and we'll speak to you soon.